Okay, welcome back. This is part two. Unfortunately, I had an unfortunate cut off. Uh, internet's not exactly the best here in the hospital, plus the area I'm in. I am using a bed if you're curious, but it's clean and also and sanitized. So, I, these are also, don't forget, uh, cards that I'm going to be using for a deck. I'm not a collector. Um, maybe long ago I started as a collector, but I'm more of a competitive player to casual player. There's nothing right or wrong with that. Uh, play with what your kids want to do. Learn the game. Make your own decks. That's why uh, you should enjoy the game. Don't forget, this is not like hockey cards or jewelry or stuff like that. that uh, they have sold or sold in the past with Dark Fox. Sometimes uh, collector card games are better because you get to play with them. They are uh, meant to be played with other people or just to, at the first. You can make the decks uh, on your own and then get to play test them, which I hope to do sometime once I'm not ill and I can travel. I already got my first shot, thank goodness, uh, for COVID. So as I was cut off, uh, like I said earlier, you want to keep evolution lines where the highest one either has the exact same or lower numbers than what you had previously. So Hatsune here has three and three. So she's an even versus the Gengar, which is four, four, three. That's what I opened or was sold. Lucky I was sold the two Gengars and I owned one. That's why I started on this idea. Um, the unfortunate thing was uh, not being able to find any in the, in the booster box. Just my luck. But I did get some other good cards from the box. So Hatney just happens to be the things, one of the things in the box that uh, the booster box that I opened up very well. I need she's a good backup just in case the Gengars get into any trouble. They can spend some time sponging. Not the greatest HP in the world. I usually try to keep my guys to 50 to 60 HP. And they're only smaller if there's something like, say, a Magic Carp to a uh, Eridos or some for the obvious reason of the power of uh, how that works in the games. Uh, Hatney's kind of in the middle too, 60 and then 80, but she can heal herself, that's the same. So you can keep stalling till you get the Gengars ready to go. Because these guys, unfortunately not like the past Gengars I had where you could, I could sit one on the bench, two on the bench, which is really nasty. That means they got so many heads and then have the Haunter do the attacks. Uh, protected as much as you can because it's very hard to put that many heads in a row. Uh, and having things like uh, gold berries to heal them because that was just enough. He was like 50 HP and the gold berries kicks in at 40. So it was a pretty nasty little guy. So for him, because uh, he has a hefty 130, that's okay. He can stay as in with one less. I don't need for him, but he does have to be active, I believe. Unless you face a, a, a similar deck or the exact same deck, almost. Uh, he has to be knocked out in order to get the card searching. So that's good for the support. Two evolutions is enough. I find three gets it pretty excessive. I wouldn't give that to unless your kids get a bit older and they can grasp a little bit more detail. Then you want a support team. Make sure they have a few support guys because you will run into some situations. Though this deck will have some interesting uh, things I'm going to show you that will help it against what it's weak against. So these guys are weak against Dark, but they resist fighting, which is always nice with Gengar's uh, family line. And this guy's also uh, Dark and fighting weakness. So you want to get that out of the way. So I have two of them. Yes, I pulled one from the Elite Box. One from the booster, and this is an interesting one. So unlike the healer there, this one's a little trickier to use, but the way I'm gonna go with it, um, look at this. So by uh, during your opponent's next turn, then they can't play any special energies or stadium cards from their hand. So they have to find another way to get the their basic needs uh, uh, to help them. So whether it be a stadium they rely on, or um, special energies which uh, you can are like rainbow energies and such that uh, you have more variety on and you can uh, use them for just anyone with a small penalty. Yeah. These guys 
help me with that and keep my stadium in play, which you'll see in a bit. Uh, but then again, look at this attack. Choose, let's see here, choose two of your opponents. So you get two attacks, two uh, different Pokemon to attack. Doesn't have to be just the uh, active if you're not playing doubles. And put five damage counters on each of them. Now again, it says five damage counters. When it says damage counters, that means strictly just you put counters. It's not the base stat where it can resist. Resistance gets around that. Give them also some, uh, a little bit of uh, support in either colorless. So for example, here, you can see this one, I kept the purple. Because uh, he can uh, basically look for Pokemon uh, in my deck that I might need. As long as it's not sitting at all in my prizes. I could have put something optional. Again, try to stay away from things like luck especially. Like, sure the kids will have fun flipping, but they're not going to get as far as, say, with the surefire attackers. So you can see during your next turn, this Pokemon takes 20 less from attacks. Great. Stall tactics. This guy is a different type of stall. He's a beef eater. He's a big tank. So you can see a raging bull does 20 for each damage counter on uh, this guy. So he doesn't want to get hurt, even though he'll be confused. He'll take 20 damage if you miss your heads. And if you're having that unlucky, you might as well use it in a good productive way until you get going. And then his second attack, it does 30 to itself, but it does 80 base. And there's not much that uh, resists colorless. Not much in these games these days. Now remember I said earlier, for now, only we're now making this a dark deck. I may even make it a pure dark deck. But even then, it's nice to pack a few dark or just something that seems to fit the theme. So I got the Spirit Tomb. Yes, I do need dark energy. I do have a few. So if I happen to get it for his 20 attack damage, great. But if not, he's in more there for his first attack. I'm just trying to get the camera to focus. Sorry about this. Okay, I'll just read it off from here. For each damage, for each Pokemon in your opponent's discard pile. So he constantly look at his grave, uh, as they call the Yu-Gi-Oh. And kind of soon for ghosts. Uh, put one damage counter on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you want. So you can divvy it up. If they have five in the grave, well, guess what? You got five to play with. To knock out or do whatever if you or set up for the Gengar. Uh, if you play any damage counters in this way, your opponent shuffles all the Pokemon from their discard pile um, into their deck. So it's a one time, and then they have to. Sh you can uh, play around with what you want to control. The Queer Fish, great. First of all, it doesn't have to evolve, and it doesn't have to need any specific energy. It's got a good ability if the Pokemon in this active spot is knocked out. So again, it's the knockout idea. By damage taken from an attack from Pokemon's, uh, from opponent's Pokemon. So that can be damage counters or base attack damage. You, they put, you can then put six counters on their attacking Pokemon. And that could be return, take a one for one for eye for an eye. 90 HP, so it can sponge quite a bit. 30 damage, and it makes some poison. So there's my status effects. That's a pretty good pass. There's about 24 cards there in the uh, Pokemon. That's okay. You want to range not quite half your deck. You don't need to be 30, but you want it, like I said, 15 to 18 ba basic Pokemon. Have a few evolutions in there. You'll get close to 20, 25. Next, I want trainers. Energy's last because I had the problem with the energy. So here's number two card that uh, is going to be abused in this thing. Old Cemetery. I looked at this. I'm like, this is incredible. Whenever any player attaches an energy card from their hand to one of their non-psychic. So anyone who's not playing psychic like you. Uh, and this gym gets out. I can put two, you can put two damage counters on that Pokemon. So now suddenly they have to worry about are they going to be able to take that damage or just attaching an energy card. And you saw earlier I had some Pokemon that kept your Pokemon gyms, stadiums in play. Like the, uh, where is he here? Like Calyrex. Calyrex? 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 
can never get the pronunciations right. That's not English as much. That's the Pokemon game. Then I've supported the rest of the trainers. I got about 18. That's a little excessive. I want to cut down. But I might cut wait till later. This is a re from Chilling Rain. Uh, Pokemon, the card game's uh, Sword and Shield division. So I did have some. This is one of the better ones for uh, for even draft. Uh, if you're playing draft. You pay, let's well, say, ten twenty dollars. You get X amount boosters, and you have to make it from that, or maybe trade around the table. And that's actually this is a good set. I like a lot of the cards that came in it. Other than the single, okay, you could get a little messed up with the single and the uh, rapid uh, attacks, which is a new subset of a uh, trainer. But the rest of them too. Supporters, don't forget, you can only play one a turn. So I packed a few Agassas. So I packed about three Agassas. So it says move three damage cards from my active Pokemon to my opponent's active. Again, plays right into, into Gengar. Avery, he's from one of the DLC sets. I've already played him. I should finish that download because I haven't started on the second one. I don't know. I've been in and out and too much to get everything done. I should do that. So this one says, Draw three cards. If you draw any cards in this way, your opponent discards Pokemon from their bench uh, until they have three. So that's a great thing. And not only gives you draw power, it takes away their uh, bench and they could be in some serious trouble. By the way, this one's a shiny because I figured, hey, why not? I got a few shiny cards. They're not rares, but they're it's just nice to have. They're nice to look at. Caitlyn, I packed one as a tech. Put number of cards in your hand from the bottom of your deck in any order and then draw as many. This is if you have a problem looking for cards uh, to help your hand. And I dropped it again. At least it wasn't a phone this time. Try not to drop a very expensive phone. Um, Echoing Horn, I put one in. I was thinking at first. Well, then this is an interesting one. This one says put one basic... Pokemon for my opponent's discard pile into their bench. Now you think, why would you help him? You gotta remember, my guy needs knockouts to get those prizes. Where you're three, especially to, for quick game, uh, four to even six. Usually six is the max, and those are for longer games. I even packed. Uh, let's see here. No, I'm gonna get to her in a little bit. I put excavation uniform. This is a regular item. I can use as many as I want. I pack one, it has the same idea, look at the bottom three cards, put them uh, on top of my deck in a order, it just doesn't have the extra uh, eliminating of uh, my opponent's bench. Flannery, I packed one tech, discard special energy from the opponent's Pokemon, so it takes one thing, and it discards a stadium in play, so again, helps the stadium, helps the special energies keep in check. Uh, this is a rarity, and I would ever pack four trainers. Usually here because they have uh, draw power, which you do need in this game. It's not, say, um, Pot of Greed. Yes, I know the, the joke. I think I know what it does. But in Pokemon, there's a lot more draw power, but you need to have it in your decks. That way your kid will have a better chance at drawing what they need. So I packed four crystals for the second reason. Uh, it says search your deck for a, a psychic energy card or a basic uh, psychic Pokemon. So he looks at which one they need. This is majority mat of uh, uh, psychics. I have ones that can look like the purple for any other colors, so I don't have to worry about that. And put it into your hand, then you shuffle your deck. So that's that's a lovely card. Two for the price of two different options for the price of one. And I actually liked her, Clara. I haven't yet to see her in the game. I, uh, oh no, maybe I have seen her in the game. Um, I have Shield. I'm trying to remember if I had uh, played against her yet. Um, choose one or both. Again, options. It says put up the two Pokemon. I have a shiny one, by the way. You can see there. Uh, choose one or both. So you can put up to. Uh, two Pokemon from the discard, your discard pile into your hand so you can get back things that you need. Or, or end, put up to two basic energy cards from your discard pile your hand. So you don't need both of them to be there. Get what you need, and there you have it. 
Now, like I said, these are proxies for the moment. I may like it. I may just keep it a little bit dark in there just because I like it. When I do get to play test it, maybe I won't. Uh, I used to play the online game, but it kept crashing on me on my one computer. So I stopped uh, doing the, uh, that for a little while. So this particular deck had the moment about six dark energies. It has about nine psychic energies. That's all I could pull between the two boxes. And finally, the special energy, which is called lucky energy. So this guy is pretty good. It says, as long as this card is attached to a Pokemon, it provides uh, this special energy as colorless. If the Pokemon this card is attached to is the active spot, so it's in play, and is damaged by an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, even when knocked out, you get to draw a card. That's draw power. So hopefully that helps. Uh, leave some comments and uh, recommendations. Uh, and I gotta go. Looks like uh, dinner time. And my nurse needs me. So uh, thank you very much for listening. Do let me know if you want to see more of these or some of the other videos I'm trying some experimentation on, like my singing videos. I did, I did improv acting for more than 10 years. That I'm very proud of as well. Uh, teaching, maybe I'll even do a video uh, in other things. So just let me know. All right? Take care. Bye.